Our intro music is provided by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Well, hi, everyone. This is Gary. Hey, the weather up in Gig Harbor, Washington. Oh, beautiful, warm, hot. I'm in my studio, and uh, I have no windows in my studio. I originally had windows in my studio, but we took them out. Okay, here's our guest. I'm going to bring him on here and then put him on hold for a minute. Hi, Mike. I take it you got it working? No, we just lost him. So, you know, uh, it is so freaking hot in the studio. Not just because, uh, you know, I don't have a window in here. I do I do have a fan. Okay, let's see what happens here. Hey, Mike, you got me there? Yeah, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. I need to put you on hold just for uh, maybe two minutes. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to put you on hold. So, you know, here we are in the studio. It's, you know, really hot because... Uh, no windows, one. Uh, we do have a fan circulating, a little bit of air in here. But it's pushing like about 95, 96 degrees right now and, and growing uh, because I have all this equipment, uh, you know, the servers, the mic preamps, the sonic uh, enhancer, uh, the compressors and all this stuff. And, the, well, eight computers running uh, to do the show. So it is, well, I tell you, in the wintertime, I don't think I have to run a heater in this room when I'm doing the show. I guarantee the equipment will heat it up. Hey, everybody, what do you think about Trump today? I did a special report about Trump uh, creating a space force. You know, he mentioned that, you know, two months ago, a lot of people kind of, you know, ah, well, he's just talking. Well, today, him and the vice president, well, they directed the Pentagon to create a space force. Uh, what has kind of got me slightly concerned, you know, hey, maybe it's conspiracy, I'm not sure, is what, you know, has happened. You know, you have the uh, release in November of uh, the, the two Navy pilots uh, encounter with a UFO and trying to catch it. And no way in blankety blank could they even come close to that UFO and the turns it made. Uh, and that leaked out or was released one of the two of course then about a week or two later they tried debunking that and then uh it came out the secretary of the air force while he was talking and addressing the cadets uh he said that, well the next war won't be fought on ground the next war and it will happen soon will be in outer space so i don't know there's a lot of things you can uh, take it one way or the other you know, maybe we're in a situation where, you know, like we've been sending these signals out for the last 50 years, given our address, you know, like, um, like you, if you, you got on Facebook or Craigslist, right. And start putting your address down. This is where I live. Well, you're going to come home from work and you're not going to have any, anything in your house left. It'll be all gone. It'll be empty. Maybe even the cupboard doors will be gone. Well, here we've been, I Hawkins told us, stop doing it. Don't give out. Don't send these signals out unless you want to be visited. And we don't even know, he said, if, well, the people visiting us will be friendly or not. Now, so we've been sending out for the last 50 years signals, you know, how they could find Earth, uh, you know, giving the address out to uh, our location. That has me concerned. Now, don't forget, TV and radio for the last 50 years on TV, broadcasting a whole bunch of stuff which would be really, really confusing to a lot of people, uh, especially, you know, not realizing, um, well, you know, um, especially aliens, you know, seeing, I mean, leave it to Beaver is one thing, but some of the stuff they've uh, showed on TV has been really scary. So let's see. I think we have Mike back. Okay, uh, no. You there, Mike? Yes, I'm here. How are you? I'm doing fine. I had to do my little spew uh, before I brought you on. Hey, uh, Mike, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody who you actually are, what you do, and we'll go from there. Great. I appreciate it. First of all, I was mesmerized by that intro with Trump and the uh, we're going to space war, but thank you for that. Yeah, so my name's Mike Murphy. Uh, historically, uh, for most of my career, I've been an entrepreneur, uh, car uh, restaurants and car dealerships, and then... Uh, Seven years today, actually, uh, my beautiful uh, young wife, Margot, at the age of 38, took her last breath. And that uh, started me in a whole other direction of my life to where I'm really committed to 
serving uh, those less fortunate and trying to make the world a little safer, better place, and actually getting people to wake up to what's really going on and uh, take back their own their power again and realize how powerful they really are. So as a result of that, I wrote this book called The Creation Frequency. It's really uh, the law of attraction and how to manifest what you truly desire in the physical reality. Well, first thing I want to say, Mike, I'm sorry for your loss. Unfortunately, you. you know, the older you get, you you lose people, you know, and yeah, I, sure. I'm 66 and I, I watched my grandparents all go, my parents go, my brother go, you know, and all my aunts and cousins. You know, and it's 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 bad, you know. And then then yeah. one of the, my I haven't seen my my daughter uh, for about two years, and they drove up from California with her seven kids. That's yeah. right, seven. I had eight, so she kind of should have learned from me. Uh, with her seven kids, and one of the kids come up and and said, "Well, hey, Grandpa, you're old, you're fat. Are you gonna die soon?" Uh. I hope you don't get that kid anything for Christmas. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, and and that wasn't so bad. But then they brought uh, a friend over from you know my my other son came with his wife and kids too. The, everybody was busy, and they brought you know his wife's um, you know sister's kid, and he he was going on. He goes, well, why don't you die soon? You know, do the world a favor. He was saying that to me. And he kept going on, you know, he kind of got on, well, why are you old? Why are you fat? And I finally got upset. And I said something I shouldn't have said to him. I said, how come you're a midget? <laughs> Good for you. Well, then he went crying to his mom, and then I had to explain, you know, I'm sorry. But I heard three hours how fat I am and how old I am, and, and he, people can't wait till I die before they can get the fillings out of my teeth. Yeah, well, things have changed. You know, I'm you're 63, I'm 61. You know, we've seen we've seen quite a shift in our little short lifetime of um, character, integrity, the way the country's headed, so on and so forth. So, yeah, these are interesting times for sure. I don't know. I think like business. I've owned uh, well a lot of businesses. I owned a computer manufacturing company in uh, let's say the mid 80s, and uh, you know, it did really good. Uh, I have had other businesses and I, I, you mentioned you sold cars. I had a friend that I went to high school with and I decided, you know, this is years ago. I, I wanted to go and buy a car from him cause I figured, Hey, we were good friends and, and tight friends in high school. So I went to his car lot and I, he was working on a car and underneath the dash. And I said, what are you doing? He goes, well, I just sold this car to this nice little old lady, but the oil light stays on. Oh, God. And I said, well, are you going to get it fixed for it? And he goes, yeah, I did. I cut the wire. Or, or turn out the light bulb. Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah. That, and that, <laughs> that, no, no good. That's not good. That's not good business. That's not good, like for sure. Yeah. I could just see that little lady driving on the freeway, and all of a sudden everything sees. Of course, I don't know. I've, I've drove cars with no oil pressure for years, so I don't know. Yeah, I hear you. So, okay, so you wrote this book, and uh, why don't you, you know, tell tell the people about it? Yeah, well, the creation frequency is really the ancient old uh, law of attraction, but we use really modern technology to really, so people can really understand how this law of attraction concept really works. And what I love about it is, you know, back in the day, the law of attraction and, and using the power of your thoughts and your emotions to bring into your physical reality is ancient, right? You know, everything starts in our imagination before it becomes into our physical reality. Like, you know, I'm talking on this cell phone right now. You know, at one point, Steve Jobs had a desire to create this, and then he used his mind to create a plan, and now it's in my hand. So everything that comes into the physical reality, the world of the five senses, starts in the imagination. And so when I was uh, 25 years old, my life was going in the wrong direction. I was in a 12-step program. I had no future. I had an eighth-grade education. I had no credit but bad credit. And someone in the 12-step meeting said to me, you know, your life is a total mess, which I had to agree with. And he said, but I know somebody might be able to help you. And why he chose me and why he chose to hook us up, I'll never know. But in my book, The Creation Frequency, I refer to him as the mystery man. I now know his name is Doug Fitzgerald, and he played a huge part in my life. And he said, you come here one hour a week for seven weeks, and you'll get everything you truly desire. And it's only $50 an hour. Well, in 1982, that was, that's like $1,000 an hour today. That was a lot of money to me. And I said, you know, I'm going to go for it. And he taught me how to 
break my life into six areas to create balance. You know, you have the physical, you have health and physical, you have relationships, you have career, you have money, you have contribution, you have personal development, these kind of things, right? And so each week we would write a different intention. Well, two years prior, I'd walked out on my um, my young wife and my two-month-old baby daughter. So now I'm two years divorced and I got a two-year-old and the first intention I wrote was to reconcile with this woman that hated me and to give my wife and my daughter back and remarry them. And so that was intention number one. And so on week seven, after we've written these six intentions, he brought, brought out a boom box. I'm dating myself, I know. And he put in a cassette tape with Theta Brainwave music on it. Then he handed me a tape recorder with a microphone and a relaxation strip. And he had me re record into this uh, microphone the relaxation script while Theta Brainwave music was playing and my six intentions. So I left there seven weeks later, $350 poor with the cassette tape, with the instructions to listen every morning and every night. Now, what I know now is when I was doing that, we'd written these intentions as it, with the final outcome as if it already existed because there's no difference between imagination and reality. So every morning I would listen to, oh, Lisa and I are so happily married. Our daughter Michelle thrives in this marriage, right? And when the reality of the situation was I, I see my daughter once a week, I'm paying child support, so on, and she's dating a doctor, so on and so forth. But I would listen every morning and every night, and every one of those intentions came through. In fact, in two, two years after listening to this, she called me up and said, hey, I need a date for a Christmas party. Will you go with me? We ended up getting remarried and having three more beautiful children. And one was to own my own business. Went in three months with no credit, no education, no future, no money, I was able to open my own restaurant using this technology because when you when you put that energy, that vibration, that frequency out into the universe and you focus, for example, right now, your subconscious mind, my subconscious mind is taking in one million bits of information every second and delivering to the conscious mind only 40 bits of information out of the one million. So the supercomputer of the subconscious mind goes through these million bits of information rapidly every second and then delivers to the conscious mind 40 bits of information that it thinks we want based on our self-talk, our conversations with other people, you know, and, and what we think about, what we focus on. So once I shifted that to I'm not a loser anymore, I don't need a drink, I don't need all these problems, okay, then I, I want my own business, all of a sudden the, it would give me the the right opportunities or the right ideas to create this own business. So th these ideas come into our head and in this particular case is put an ad in the newspaper, raise money and, and open the business. And so this is how it works. And so when we really understand it, we get deep into this. Well, boy, you know, a lot of people go through that. I, you know, a, a little bit about me back in the mid eighties, you know, I, I, boy, I was in broadcasting, uh, I, you know, I, I kind of was getting burned out because you never know how long you're going to be in broadcasting. You know, it would go from, you know, day to day. Somebody comes in to, you know, talk to the station manager with the audition tape. You, everybody would look like, is it me? It's going to be going. But I, 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 I had a, a, a massive electronic background and I developed a clone of the old IBM XT, uh, that actually worked. And, uh, I started out like a $250 investment. And by the first year, I was up to $4 million in sales. Just off wow. of $250. Wow. Well, you, you, you came up with the idea, right? You came up with the concepts from somewhere. Where did it come from? That's really the big question, you know. Uh, a lot of us like to take ownership and think, oh, I came up with this. You know, I, I live in a state right now where, where I really don't take credit for anything. I just, real, I just create these intentions and then I let the universe or God or the creator, whatever you want to call it, bring the right people, the right concepts, the right opportunities to me. And just I just kind of I try to let life flow through me rather than controlling, manipulating, forcing my will and see where it goes. And so therefore, it's a lot less stress and it works a heck of a lot better by, you know, it's funny.